Our pop culture has the power to bring diverse communities together. It's a bridge that connects us, its characters and their stories, sparking our imaginations and igniting our ambitions. From heroes to villains to creatures, we celebrate the loved icons of cinema, television, gaming, and comics through our licensed and original collectible products. Sideshow's mission is in creating highly detailed statues, posable figures, fine art prints, and prop replicas. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Dan Lok Show. Today, I am like a kid in a candy land. You have no idea. Look at where we are at. Now, if you've been watching my videos on YouTube, you know from time to time I will do a lot of unboxing videos and I see the comments that you ask me, where do you get the toys? Where do you get the collectibles? Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. I'm so excited to be at the SciShow studio and thank you Robin for inviting us. So, so grateful to have, a, have us here. This is a dream come true. This is, a, this is truly a dream come that's, true. That's wonderful. Thank you. And uh, in case you don't know SciShow Studio, we're going to go into the story. What, what SciShow is really about, I think, is connecting people with their favorite characters, right? Their icons, right? right? right. From your favorite TV shows, right? From your favorite movies, Iron Man, Batman, all the characters that, that you love. But maybe you see, it's just, maybe it's, it's just a toy company. We're going to talk about a lot more than that. Talk about the backstory a little bit, right? So Robin, maybe share with us a little bit about how SciShow, how this all started. Wow, <laughs> we've been in business this year. It's going to be our 25th year. 25 years right. anniversary. Very, wow, very long time. Yes, and we started as a prototype development studio. Yes, and we were helping other businesses realize their dreams, their mm. prototypes, their products. Yes, and we were we were doing well. We were making some money and being able to feed. A very ourselves. humble beginning, right? A very humble beginning. Just before the show, we were talking about. Four people. Four, four people. Four of you, we right? Started, we started in a garage in Woodland Hills, which is San Fernando Valley. Yes. And technically, it was probably half a garage because the car was still in the garage. Yes. But <laughs> very small. And there was a crew of four people. Wow. And we were really fortunate. We, we, found, uh, we found each other mm. and we shared the same passions or mm. similar passions. Mm. And we made a, a group and started working together. Mm -hmm. And it, it went on from there. And we were able to work with many larger companies. At that time, we were considered a subcontractor. Yes. So if you had a toy company or yes. some other company, they yes. would say, hey, let's send it out of house. Yes. We were the out of house. Out of house. <laughs> we, were, we were the small little garage out like, of the house, but yes. we were out of the house. Yes. So we did that for a few years. and. We, uh, we also took ideas that didn't work well in mm. those toy companies mm. and they said, okay, this project is going to die, so mm. can, you, can you make it better? Yes. So we would redesign it and then present it back to them. Yeah. And quite a few projects went super, super famous yeah. and uh, we sat there going, wow, we, we did a lot of love and labor, mm. but we got paid that much. Uh, what, they, like the, the beginning, the, the struggling years, how long did that last for? Like how many years you, you, you thought of you just kind of doing it out of passion? It was it, it was quite quite a few years. We we went probably I think t eight, ten years wow. before we really got traction. We were starting to 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 work fluently, mm. you know, so we weren't mm. worried about you know when the next where the next meal yeah. was coming yes, from. Yes, yes. Um, but we did the, the, the toy prototyping, and there were some things in the industry that were going a, a little south at that point. Yes. We had various strikes, writer strikes, actor strikes. Yes. Um, so the industry was kind of shrinking, and, mm. and some of those businesses were shrinking a little bit, so it made it a little harder if yes. you're a group of starving artists to work. What was a turning point for, for SciShow? Like from that to now with- The turning like, point was- It's huge. Off five buildings, right? Right, many, I think the turning point for- Staff, staff, yeah. The turning point was, one of the items we designed went 
skyrocketed. Like a viral, like it's like, it, well, not even viral, it just went. It, it, you saw it, you saw it on TV, you saw it, they made cartoons out of it, yes. they made merchandise out of it, yes. and we're like, maybe we got this little check. Yes. Uh, and we, there was really a lot of love and effort right. put into redesigning those particular sets of characters. Right. I unfortunately, I can't mention the characters, but it was a cartoon. They made it into a cartoon. And uh, we said, enough, we're gonna, we're gonna do it for ourselves. Mm. We, we, we know how to do the prototyping. We've been doing this So for you a while. know that you have the ability to create some a product that people will love. Right. You know and, what and you we could were, do. And we were fans ourselves. We were geeks. Yes, yes. We're, you know, when we, we redesign something or we make the prototype, mm. there's a certain level of fandom mm. that goes into that. Yes. So, and on the side, we were doing all our own stuff. Mm. And, and it was all kind of pop culture, Hollywood related. So we said, why aren't we doing this for ourselves? Yes. And one of uh, my partners, mm. I, we were very blessed to make those connections at that time. He was a business guy, because uh, you need a business guy. You need a business guy. When you, you have, have all, all the artists, artists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to do my art, I want to do my art. And he's like, let's get all together. Yes. And what are we going to do? What's yeah, the model, what, right? What's the goal? What's the, mo what's mm. the business model? How do we how do we make this, sell this, present it? Mm. So he was instrumental in that. Mm. And we, we were lucky because each partner had their own set of, their own skill set that oh, they nice. brought to the table. Nice. And I think that was really the magic that mm. we were geeks, but we also had a skill set and we didn't step over on somebody else's mm. skill set. So, it, so it, everyone it, has their own areas of expertise and you have a, a strong painter. business person. We had a business yeah. person, we had a painter, we had a sculptor and um, a graphic designer. Wow. So we had our own mini studio. Yes, time, a mini studio. Which is great. Yes. So uh, yeah, it was that turning point of they made how much money? It's a cartoon, it's got products, and I'm like, no, we can, we can really do this. Because as you think about it, most people think about toys. Well, is that, is that a, like a real business? Can you make a living doing it, right? I'm curious in terms of even pricing all the, all the items that you have. Because they are like toys, or all the, they have toys, but most toys are sell to kids. Mm -hmm. But to me, like, your, these are not even, I, shouldn't, I, don't want, I don't want to call them toys, they're like collectibles. Right. right? It's selling more to well, even at adults. The, even at that time, when we made items, they, they were in the toy category, yeah. but we considered them differently. Yeah. Because we, we, had, we brought a tailor in that worked with the studios so and yeah. was making actual costumes. Yeah. So we, we went hardcore. We're yeah. like, we're going uh, to... Make it as, as realistic as possible. We're, right? we're going to reproduce exactly, try and reproduce exactly what you saw on film. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think we did really well. Our first license was with Universal Studios. Yeah. And we did um, the Classic Monsters. Oh, nice, right. nice. Yeah, that was that was monsters. that was one of our uh, our guests. Yes. We, we all were like, ah, oh, yes, I, yes. I love the Frankenstein yeah. films and the, yes. and the, the classic Hollywood. Because yes. we thought that was classic Hollywood. Yes. Uh, but at, at at that time, you didn't see a lot of product. Yeah. And when you did see it, it was in uh, October. It was it was for Halloween. Yeah. And then you would see you know mm. the generic stuff come out, yeah. but we never saw figures we never saw statues we never saw anything that was what we would consider classic and collectible for mm -hmm. for people of that age range mm -hmm. at the time and we were fortunate to meet with a, a product rep and mm -hmm. we got into universal mm -hmm. and said hey um, we're interested in licensing the monsters mm -hmm. and they said it's not halloween I'm like we know we're gonna sell it Yes. Like, but it's not Halloween. We're gonna sell it in spring. Yes. We're gonna make this happen. <clears throat> yeah. So our first license was the um, in the eight eight inch figure category. Okay. And we, we it was slightly jointed figures. Okay. And uh, you know they were just like, there you go, you go, you go, guys, mm -hmm. you four people, you go. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. But like, good it's luck. like. And yeah. what we didn't realize at the time is that Universal didn't hold the likeness rights for any of the actors. And that's why when you were seeing product, it was very generic. It wasn't of Karloff, it wasn't as Lugosi. Yes. And they said, well, now you have our license, you license for the monsters, but now you have to go make deals with all the estates. Oh, okay. Right, and we're like, yes, we will. We're gonna do that. Yeah. And there was a lot of uh, skepticism from mm. the studio. Yeah. And they said, oh. Because no one's ever done it. No, and they 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 had they were having difficulty connecting with the estates, mm -hmm. and uh, fortunately we got a hold of Sarah Karloff, 
Mm. And she represented her father's estate. We said, yeah. hey, we got this crazy idea. We got the license from Universal. We want to make it look like your dad. Because mm. it there was no product, no official, mm. what they would call officially licensed product mm. in the marketplace. Mm showing the classic actor spaces yeah. on that product. Yeah. So we were able to make deals with the, the Karloff and the Lugosi estate, and mm. we did the first and the Cheney. So we mm. did the top three. Yes. And uh, our product line was, was sold to Toys R Us at the time. Oh, wow. And it, bam, sold out. Mm -hmm. Because the collector's like, where did this come from? Like, it's like, this is... Right, where did yeah. it come from? Yes. It actually looks like what I remember from my childhood. Yes, yes that's exactly like it. what I remember yes. when my dad took me to the movies. Yeah. You know, or when I'm <clears throat> up late at night and I'm watching the film. Yeah. And there was an emotional connection yes. that their faces brought yes. to those characters. Yes. Because that's what made them the characters in the film. Because I think about it, like, I, I never... I never collected toys before coming across the first product, mm -hmm. like from Sideshow. Like I never collect. I, I'm not. A, I'm a businessman. It's an addiction, right? right? <laughs> and then, it's, and then I, when I saw, I think I was browsing online one day and I saw this figure. I forgot which. I forgot which what was the first one I bought. Maybe Iron Man. I'm not so sure. Like the first one. That's and, classic, right? And I'm like, I'm. This is not a toy. It's like. It, it feels like a, the connection, if you can bring this home, a piece of the, the memory, the, the film, the excitement, the emotion, that's, right? That's the connection. That's, that's it's different. why when we, when we did that first product line, yeah. we were geeks. Yes. We were pop culture geeks, and, and that was a labor of love, and yes. we were ecstatic. Yes. To the point where we went to Toys R Us, yeah. at the local Toys R Us, and we took cameras, and we were in the aisle taking pictures of a People. product on yes, the shelf because yes, we were so excited. Like we made it, yeah. I have to say we got bounced out of that Toys R Us because they were like, no pictures, like yes. we were paparazzi yeah. at the time. I don't know yes. why. They yes. were like, you can't take pictures in here. But that's yes. how excited we were, yes. that we were emotionally attached to it. And we got a lot of feedback from mm. fans mm. that said, thank you, mm. because this is what I remember yes. it looked like. And yes. I have it, and or I gifted it to my father, yes. and he can't believe that it looks like that. Yes. So it was gratifying it's that... 100%. that one, we made the right choice. Yes. And that it worked. Yes. And that it was well received by the fans. Yes. So we, we did that line and then we came back with um, a larger six scale version. Mm. So it, we upscaled it. Mm. And then again, that was in Toys R Us. Would you say also because of the timing for now, the, let's say, last 10 years, the, the Marvel Universe, all the superheroes, really, it's both. SciShow and that, it both kind of grew together, right? We were, we were in a, a good spot at yeah. that time. Yeah. And uh, we worked well collectively. Yes. And we didn't quit. We just had a lot of hard work and mm. not giving up. And mm. even when we failed, we yeah. had to regroup and, and start a different way. Yes. And that's, for us, for, for us, I think, and for me personally, failure is good. Some people get freaked out about it, mm. and mm. they let they let it sidetrack them. Mm. But I think, in in certain respect, failure gives you that breathing moment mm. to reflect back mm. and or say, "Or to reinvent, maybe." Yeah, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, what can I? How can I make that better? Or do I trash that idea and go in a different mm. direction? Yes. It gives you that pause moment. Yes. So failure is good. It's when you have repetitive identical failure yeah that's stupid that means we haven't learned from our mistakes that's stupid yes, yes. you can't yes. you can't uh, continue to fail in the same manner because then you're not learning mm. so we we did have a lot of uh, failure uh, but we were able to pick ourselves back up robin was there a time during the last 25 years like moments where like it was a pivotal moment it's like it could be one of those moments where okay when this works it's going to be great this doesn't work oh we're going to be like in big trouble like the, those moments i mean i'm sure you have a lot of ups and downs share with us maybe a couple of those moments i i think you know once we got into the momentum with the universal license mm. and we got product in the store mm. um we weren't knowledgeable about what happens in the store. We weren't mm. knowledgeable about any of that. Yes. So that was the, the, the school of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some cases, there's a lot of hidden rules 
that stores run by, yeah. um, and they make the manufacturers jump through flaming hoops. Yeah, that and the, then pay them late and uh, all that, right? Yeah. Right, and and you know the the interesting thing with some stores is they have their own time frame of how, what they think things should sell through by. Yeah. And if and if it isn't sold, you're gone. Yeah. They take it and they toss it in a discount bin. Yeah. And then if it's not sold from there. They literally send it back to you, crushed, and say, "Give us our money back." Yeah. And you have a crushed product. Yeah. So, for us, that was difficult. Yeah. You know, when you have you have geeks and you you have people that are emotionally invested because yeah. not only are our clients emotionally invested, we're emotionally invested. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get it back and it's all crushed. You yeah. know, and and uh, we made a change to not sell to uh, major stores that yes. we were going private we were going to do self dis distribution online um, we were going to sell online and yeah. we were we weren't going to be distributing our product through an actual distributor and we weren't going to be selling to Toys R Us and major mm. stores that were going to go through specialty shops mm. mom and pop shops yes. and then we were going to be selling online yes. so for us that was a big change for us yes. because we were um, we were bucking the norm because they said, what are you doing? Yeah. Everybody gets distributed. Everybody uses a diamond or everybody uses some sort of distributor to push mm. their product. And toys, you got to touch it and feel it and all that, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, but we thought we had we had the key that we were going to sell to uh, local shops yep. and they, they're already invested in tailoring the experience mm. to the people in their town. Yes. So they could be our brand ambassadors mm -hmm. and sell the product mm -hmm. and then we would also sell online yes. and then we would start taking control of our own destiny. Yes. And because at that time, everybody was saying, no, you have to do it this way. And again, we had a moment where we had to step back and say, we understand the normal path, but we're going to try and do it differently. Mm -hmm. And so we, we became self-distributed. And now from, from there to where we're at now, we're, yes. we're distributing. Holly, what, what percentage of the customers are coming from online? Like, is it what percentage are coming from like the, the smaller boutique stores now? Oh goodness, uh, it's it's hard to tell because we have we have boutique stores, but we also have distribution. Mm. So we we have uh, some distributors some throughout yes. um, throughout Asia, yes, Europe, yes, and uh, so they sell to other stores. So it's really hard to say I what see. that quantity is. I see, I see. But we've been successful. I'm not yeah. I'm not complaining. I'm yes. Not, I'm not worried about where the, the next meal is coming and, and, from. And I, and I love the model from a business perspective. Um, I think it's very smart because uh, a lot of the, let's say, the, the items, the products I order, uh, some of them are limited, right? You don't always carry, so you don't carry a, a lot of inventory, right? Yeah. So then I know. And then also it creates urgency. Okay, I got to buy this because Sideshow might not have it like a year from now. Like, or they become very, very expensive. Right. Even I buy it like on eBay and things like that, right? So that's from that perspective, I think it's, it's awesome. And then also the pre, I could see where you can pre-order mm -hmm. certain products. Where toys usually is an impulsive buy, right? Kids in a the store, they see the toy, that's right. cool, right? This is not like, no, like we, I waited sometimes well, a so year for my It's my also item different to manufacturing. Yes. Um, you know, when you're seeing those uh, plastic toys. Yeah. They're manufactured way different. They're yeah. In, in tens of thousands. And our product is hand molded, mm -hmm. handmade, mm -hmm. hand assembled yep. in a lot of cases. Yes. And hand painted. Yes. So you, it's very difficult sometimes to. It's oh, not mass gonna, production. We're going to make 50,000. That's, no. that's not the nature of the product. Yeah. It's, it's uh, of how you go from start to finish. It's a very artistic manual process. Yes. So that's why you have a limited edition. <clears throat> and it's so happy. Like as, as a fan, you could, you, I would buy one, one product. It's an Iron Man figure. And then, oh, there's another one. Like that's a different color or a, a different look. And that's great. You collect that. Mm -hmm. And then there's another figure. And, and this, it is addictive. It is. Well, especially with Iron Man. Oh, right? it, it's, and then, it's addictive. Well, you had movie, what, movie <coughs> one was three. One, two, three. Was three suits. Yeah. And then movie two is like 900. Like, you, yeah. they just exploded the yeah. amount of suits. Yeah. Uh, and uh, now you're like, okay, well, that suit's cool and that suit's cool. And, yeah. and I want I want a heavy lifting Iron Man suit. It's yeah. like more of an, kind of an army yeah, 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 the, lifter one. Yeah. But they, they were so unique. Yeah. That, the Hulk, Hulk Buster, right? Right, yeah. and and they were they were so unique that when if you're an Iron Man fan, you're like, now I need. It's not where it was a color shift. They were they were significant Making, designs. Yes, and they unique. You know, yes, paint, different abilities, paint applications, yeah. and different abilities. So now you went, I need them all. 
Yeah. You know, and, and then they have the Hall Hall of Armors. That's you know? right. So that's 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 beautiful. The and then and then when to. when do you guys transition to more than making more the life size or, or bigger figures? Uh, well, you know, the interesting thing is we started out doing bigger figures, oh. bigger uh, life size busts, yes. and then that went away. When when we were doing the prototyping, mm. we, like I said, we were doing other things, other yes. passion pursuits. And at that time, we were working with a comic book artist uh, named Bernie Wrightson. Okay. And he had just released a beautiful graphic novel of mm. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Mm. So we did a life-size bust of mm. Bernie's item, uh, of his Frankenstein. It was beautiful. Wow. So that was limited edition. But at the time, we were a small studio. Yes. So I think it was like an edition of 25. 25, yes. So if somebody can find the, the Bernie Wrightson sideshow bust, that's going to be... Very yeah, special. So it's very rare so we a lot of these categories we're working in mm. we we were working in just mm. nobody knew it yes so when we got the chance to start working back into the, the life size yes. we're like oh bring it on we, yes. we're, we're ready we, yes. we've been ready to do that so. yes and I think one of the one of the key things about uh, all the items I collect is it's not just a figure, but it comes with a lot of accessories. Yes. So then you don't get bored. It's oh, he's just a figure, but hey, you can you can you can change the hands. You can right. change the the head. You can you can change this and you can different position and different things. It makes it makes it very interesting to play, but also interesting to display. We right? we had a lot of clients that reach out and say, I I, I love this figure. I don't know what to do with it. I can't pose it. It doesn't yeah. look like anything. The, the, you guys have beautiful galleries online because we have uh, we have a wonderful photography yes, team, yes. And video team. Yes. And the customers were struggling to make it look like that. Mm. So now we we have a series of how to be a poser where we yeah. we have one of our um, a, a gentleman that's just that's what he does. He's yes. very talented at that. So yes. he has his own series. And we're like, yes. okay. This is how you pose this figure. Yes. So we walk collectors through yes. step by step if yes. you want to make it do something. I remember the, fir the first couple of figures, I'm like, this doesn't look very good. Right. Like the head is like this and it's like this. That's well, not a very yeah. like heroic pose, right? right? It's like, look odd. The great thing about Terry in that series is he'll <clears> tell you why he's doing that. Yeah. He said if you want to look dynamic, create a certain emotions, yeah. He'll actually give you tips mm. on how to how the wrist works yes. and why you have to turn it certain ways so yes. he's he's not just showboating he's yes. actually teaching you how yes. to do that which yes. is our, our collectors gave us positive feedback on that right so i'm glad right. that we can help them to pose it in their collections and they send us pictures it's just you know beautiful and you have a blog i know all the collectors they take photos they enter kind of like a contest mm -hmm. like collect is it collector of the month like, yes it's, right yeah collector of the yeah. month i gotta enter that I got yes. into that. Well, and, and the good thing is we want to see everybody's collection. So we're not looking for overwhelm me with your collection. It's show me your favorite piece. Show me yeah. what you Just got. your passion, right? Yeah, your yeah. passion, whether it's one or two pieces or mm. if you've designed, you know, a whole room. We've mm. had people that have designed custom yes. rooms. We've had people that just have certain corners available and yes. they, they decorate a certain corner of their yeah. house. Who's your favorite character? Oh goodness, I, I was just talking with your crew beforehand. Uh, I love Deadpool Yes. because he just gets away with so much stuff, yes. so much stuff. You know, when you're having a hard day at work, you yes. just want to Deadpool somebody. <laughs> and if you guys know the character, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. So that's my my. my and he's so different from every other character. Right. Just, right. It's just not politically correct. Not politically right. correct. Just a lot of you know physical slapstick yes. stuff in the yes. character and. Uh, so that he's he's one of my favorites. Yes. Um, but I'm I'm also you know we we recently did a statue of um, oh goodness we did one for How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, How to Train Your Dragon. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's it. That's he up. was you know he was really cool. Mm. So. I do also want to ask you about the the team because the team is what makes the company work, right? <laughs> Um, Absolutely. One thing I love, if you've never purchased anything from SciShow, let me walk you through the process. After you purchase, um, at the end, there's a thank you, right? And the thank you, there's a little video. There's all the teams saying, yes. like, hey, thank you. Like, thank, like it's, for the first time I saw, that's very unusual. And I love, I love that video because when you buy something online, keep in mind, like when, when I buy a toy, all I saw was the, pic, the picture. Picture. So I bought the picture and I really don't, even before I came to, the studio, I didn't know how big the company is. I thought, oh, maybe it's you got 10 people, <laughs> 20 people. You don't know, you have no idea, right? It, there's no concept. And But when you can see the people, the the culture behind the company, it almost makes me feel, oh, 
like this this real people behind real people. behind this, and they're just like me. They 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 are fan, and they right, right? they like, they come on yeah, in like, your yeah, 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 your pop goes, yeah, like we're we're one of us. So so it's, it's sometimes it's hard to find a connection like that. Yeah. and we're we're the hub. You yes. know, I want to I want to be the hub because we spent so so many years as artists struggling to find other people to connect with. Yes, and I think that that's one of the unique things of our business that yes. even we went from four people to 160 yeah. but it still feels like family it's mm, close mm. you know we, we try to keep that atmosphere mm. and a lot of the people we have on staff are also pop culture geeks you know, yes some, some do cosplay you know some yes. have gaming go to comic con they Comic-Con, yes, Comic -Con, we, every yes. year we go to Comic-Con, yeah. and uh, but some they, there's such a wide variety of passions and and interests yes. and pursuits. Some people are gamers, you know, hardcore yes. gamers. Some people yes. are are uh, sci-fi, Dungeons and Dragons. You know, yes. we haven't there's there's probably nothing that you can't name that one of the one hundred six people that work. But I could see just even walking. I'm not sure I include some B-roll in, in here, yeah. but even with we got a lot of B-roll. Yeah, in the office. Um, Andy, you can see, is, is right there, right? Um, Andy was sharing with me the CEO of the company. The CEO of the company is actually a vegan, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So he has this kitchen that provides vegan food and also teaches the staff mm -hmm. how to make vegan food. Yeah. See, that's all part of the culture. It's very unusual, again, for just with a prototype, a toy company. Like, that's different. That's all culture to me, right? Mm -hmm. From what I see. That, I think that's, uh, so I bet so the staff, you, it's very close, right? It's, it's important for us to, to make it a family yeah. and, and to it we my partner uh, Greg always says it's not about the product it's about the people yeah and it is about the people because if you're connecting with your co-workers mm. and you're connecting as a group and you love where you work mm. then you're going to be happier in what you're producing mm. and, and the customers and will feel it the customers will feel it and we haven't been shy about sharing the staff with the customers mm. we we have live chat you know mm. email but we also have the uh, the online shows. Mm. We we have different venues for to bring the staff to the people. Yes. So we have weekly shows, and we'll pull people from customer support. Yes. And then one of the the interesting interactions we just had, we had one of the guys from customer support do an unboxing, oh, yes. and in the chat was like, "Hey, that was the guy yesterday that helped me with my coupon code." Oh, nice. So it was nice because nice. they get to th these are real people. You're not calling yeah. a call center. Yeah, it's not an know. actor. Just right. Like it's doing not an this, actor. Yeah. You're not calling a call center. Mm. Uh, these are people that actually work here and come every day and mm. and deal with the product and and help create the product or they they help to fulfill the product once it's sold to the collectors. Mm. So it's 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 a So a now how the system. side show structure now. So you have I know you have the multimedia side, right? We do. You have the the delivery shipment side mm -hmm. and you have the kind of the creation prototype mm -hmm. side. How how does the company divide like in terms of functions? <laughs> it's Creating the product and fulfilling the product, okay. I think, is the easiest way to, okay. to define it. And then you have the studio, and, right? Yeah. yeah, we have the studios and... and beautiful, uh, by the way. Look at this. This is awesome. You only see pizza, but it's beautiful. This, <laughs> this chunk. this much. Yeah, this, this chunk. That's that chunk. That's this chunk. <laughs> well, it's, it's really a two-part <clears throat> system because we want to create collectibles that mm. people have an emotional attachment to. Yes. And it fulfills... A moment or it captures a moment in their in their life where they remember I remember when I went to the theater with my family I remember when we sat in front of the TV and watched this yes. um, I think I'm a superhero so therefore I want the Iron Man because yes. I can picture myself as Tony Stark in the yes. suit and that's yes. me and I want it yes. um, but then there's another portion of the business that has to deliver on that emotional purchase mm. and what we have to do on that mm. side of the business is not create disappointment uh, because I you like don't that. want disappointment. Yeah. You want that emotional excitement to carry through all the way to delivery. So that's what their objective is, mm -hmm. is to connect with the customer, make sure they're happy, mm -hmm. make sure all their questions are answered, their accounts are taken care of, mm -hmm. and to be able to shepherd that product to them and get it delivered to their door and to 
really close close that. That's actually a great point. Like not to create disappointments because I was just before before we turned the camera I was showing Robin like all my I just have like sideshow delivery delivered to my house today. And here. Yeah, like here, like yeah. seriously, I have the shipment every all the time. And, and I'm glad that our our uh, text messaging is working. Yeah, it's working very well. <laughs> we it's very, very working well. And but I bought like toys from other companies, like a couple other brands. I won't name name, mm -hmm. right? But similar, like you know, figure and stuff like that. The hand doesn't work, or it doesn't look right, or the, it's it's something like uh, there is uh, so. Now I don't buy from anybody except I show anymore. Like it's just, oh, it's, it's, awesome. it's just. I told <laughs> you this. Are. There's some other character. Yeah. Well, no, to, I have never been. I've never seriously not because I'm in sideshow studio. I've never been disappointed one time. Well, one time, not one time. It's lovely to hear that. Thank you. And and we we work hard to make that happen. And uh, but we're not delusional to to know that mm. stuff happens. Things yes. break. Yes. Things, when you ship are and yeah. Yeah, you're shipping it and um, you can. We had one customer that mm. kept complaining that his stuff was broken, and uh, like, oh, I'm so sorry. Let's replace that for mm. you. And then he was taking pictures, and there was a boot print on his box. Mm. I said, he, "There's a boot print." He upset the delivery guy, and the guy every the, single time. And the the yeah. delivery guy was squashing it, and so we we helped try and, and rectify that for him. But he uh, the ultimate journey of that product it was still broken yes so we had to you know rectify it and replace it and and make it whole yeah. and make his 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 emotional attachment and yeah. his his understanding of what he was going to yes. get from that product yes. whole. Yes. but some some things like happen that, that you never never foresee yeah. um, and we know it's going to happen and if we mm. we try to work our hardest to make it right yes and if not we try to improve their their experience for next time yes. so it's that's one of the, those failure points it's like okay i'll fail but we're going to try and we're going to try and improve improve it yes. and make sure that the clients are happy the next time where do you see sideshow is going in the next five years so now we've got we've got <laughs> 25 years like yeah, 30th 25. anniversary yeah so 30th anniversary like where would I, you see sideshow is at i want to be in a completely different place than we are now you okay know, I, okay we have been working on our IP. We yes. have one of our IPs, Court of the, the Court of the Dead. Yes. We have a lot of stuff in the pipeline. We have yes. some really exciting stuff coming up. Yes. Unfortunately, I can't say it. Stay tuned. But Stay tuned. Uh, yeah, we're, we have a lot of things piled up mm. to to activate. You know, in the next few years. So yes. we're super excited internally, and and we're we keep. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so super excited. I just can't tell uh, you yeah, about I can't it. Wait. <laughs> It's a cliffhanger. I know, it's a cliffhanger. We'll have to we'll yeah. do another interview. Yeah, well, we'll come back with we'll another come interview. Back. Yes. Right now we can talk about now it. Now we can talk about it. So for my audience, maybe they just want to purchase the first product. Or they've right. been following me for some time. Right, right. Um, that, that they want to now expand the collection. Or, they can do that online. But I'm telling you, if you buy your first one, that's it. It's game over. Like it's it's this it doesn't it's 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 a it's a never ending black hole. This that's my because, warning. Because we've decided to be a never ending yeah. black hole. Once you yeah. get your first one, that's it. You're we done. We try to make the client experience quick and easy, so yeah. you can go to sideshow.com. Sideshow.com. Yes. Can browse. YouTube definitely follow on YouTube if you want YouTube, tips. YouTube. Yeah. We're on Instagram, um, but just the just the experience online when you're on the product page. Hopefully we can serve you up videos. We can serve you up a gallery. Yeah. You can see all different sides of what you're gonna be purchasing. You can yes. click online chat and talk to one of our geeks in customer support yes. because they're either a fan or they have the product sitting in front of them mm. or they've been down in production while they're sculpting the product. Yeah. So they're, they're very knowledgeable about the product. Um, and then we also have flexible payment plans. Oh yes, that's actually, it's actually very important. Because, I mean, it's still, it's for most people, it's a four, three, four hundred dollars figure, right? It's not a thirty dollar figure. Well, I, we originally started the, the flexible payment plans, um, I believe, early 2000s, mm. and we, nobody in the industry was doing it yeah. at all. Yeah. And we tailored it based on the client interaction that I had. Yeah. And he said, hey, I wanted to buy this item, but I got the money and I blew it. Mm. I just spent it, yes. and now I'm kicking myself because I really wanted this item, and yes. I only have X amount of dollars left. Yes. So he said, "Can I just send you all my money, and then you can allocate it for me?" Yeah. And I said, "Yes, we'll make that happen." Bingo, bingo. <laughs> and we did, and that that was the inspiration of the flexible <coughs> flexible payment plan because yeah. we realized some of the clients were struggling, and 
didn't quite know how mm. to, to finance their money to, yes. to make that, that purchase happen. So in some cases, it allowed that collector to be able to to obtain their dream item yes. that they thought they couldn't because the one lump sum was so overwhelming for them. Yes. So the payment plan said, hey, you can pay for it 75 yeah. bucks a month yeah. and we'll hold on to it and we'll ship it out when, it, when it's ready. And, yes. And yeah. some of the items, even if you, when you pre-order, mm -hmm. you just make a deposit, then you can still keep making payment when it's right. finished. Well, we try to time it. Um, with, Before the release, right? Right. When, when we have things in production, we try to time the payment plan so once you finish your last payment, your item is delivering with everybody else's nice. because you still want that excitement and you don't want to go online and hear from some guy how <laughs> the item is great and he loves it and you're missing out but your payment plan still has two payments to go yes. so we try to time it appropriately so everybody gets the i just remember i'll share a quick story before we wrap this up so uh, I, I go to see movies all the time that's a movie but that's how i i relax right so every single time i would go see they say one of the marvel movies mm -hmm. Usually after the day or two, I would get an email from SciShow. Exactly the movie I just watched, right? So, so let's say I just watched Iron Man 3. <laughs> and then it's Iron Man 3 figures. Oh, here we go. Here we go. And my wife would be like, oh, SciShow just times you perfectly. They know when you're watching the movies. I'm surprised we haven't found out your wife's email address. Oh, yes. Yeah, like, like, I'm this like, this is what he wants. This is what he wants. <laughs> how, so like, how do you know? It's, it's perfect time. Every single time. Every single time. So it's, we, it's we awesome. It's so awesome. It's thank you, Robin. Thank you for thank, thank you for having thank us. Thank you for coming out, and we're gonna take your tour. Yeah, so make sure I want to include some special uh, B roll for you, and make sure also check out SciShow. Just go to go to the website, get your first collection. Yes, do your, please. Do your unboxing video. Don't just watch my unboxing video. Do your own unboxing video. We we love to see everybody that that gets the product. They unbox it. Yes. Send pictures of your of your first product if you get one, and you know share your collection with us because. We're geeks and we love to see that kind of stuff. So please hit our social media channels, hit us up online at sideshow.com and, and share your passion. Yes, and comment below what else you want to see.